Hey everybody, it is that time again. It's set review time, this time for Guilds of Ravnica. It uh, goes into pre-pre-release over on Loading Ready to Run today. Check that out, I'll be in Judge Chat helping out. And then next Friday, those of you doing midnight pre-releases will get your hands on these cards. So it's time for us to take a look at all of the cards in Guilds of Ravnica, starting off with white. Up first, I've got three quick disclaimers for you. Disclaimer number one is that this is a limited set review. I'm going to talk about draft. To a lesser extent, I'm going to talk about sealed. That's it. No commander, no legacy, no Canadian Highlander, nothing like that. So if I say a card is a stone cold F and you should never play it, that means in limited could be an A plus in some other format. Disclaimer number two. I've not played with these cards yet. Some of them I have if they're reprints, but otherwise I haven't played with these cards and I haven't played this format. So uh, I, you know, there, there might be something that a week from now, two weeks from now, a month from now we discover and a card actually changes in grades. But these are how I'm going to approach these cards when I first get my hands on them and how I recommend you do it as well. But thirdly, this is just my opinion. This is just how I rate cards. Uh, I, I'm definitely going to rate some cards differently than you will. Perhaps I'm wrong about something and you're right. Perhaps you're wrong and I'm right. Perhaps we just have different opinions on cards. Uh, you know, I personally am typically pretty down on auras and not everybody is. But that's the beauty of these set reviews is that they encourage discussion. So I want to hear from you in the comments down below. I want you to talk to each other in the comments down below and discuss these cards, discuss these ratings. Nobody's right. It's magic. Everybody can be wrong sometimes, even the best, and certainly even me. See, the point there was I'm not, not, not included in the best. But anyways, let's get on to the first white card. Up first, we have Blade Instructor. Blade Instructor is two and a white for a creature human soldier at common. It's a 3-1 with Mentor. Now, Mentor is the Boros mechanic, the red-white mechanic. And Mentor says whenever this creature attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. An important thing to note there is that this does check on resolution. So if this 3-1 targets a 2-2, and then before Mentor finishes resolving, that 2-2 becomes a 3-3 or a 4-4 due to some sort of combat buff. Mentor will check and say, okay, we targeted this one. Oh, hey, wait. That's not less than 3 power, and it will not actually get that, uh, get that counter. So when Mentor was announced, I was a little bit worried, you see. Red-white's been good in some sets, and I had a bit of a uh, PSTD going on there. Anyways, as you'll see throughout these set reviews, the Mentor creatures generally have extremely low toughnesses. They're actually going to be really bad Mentors who teach their student one thing before horribly dying in front of them. All sold a 3-1 that gives a counter basically when it dies, which is what this kind of says, but only if it was attacking with a friend is a pretty middling card. You know me, I want my 3-1s to be for 2. Ultimately, this does feel just like extremely filler, kind of a C-. minus. You probably should cut it a little bit more often than not. Up next is Bounty Agent. Bounty Agent is one and a white for a creature human soldier at rare. It's a 2-2 with Vigilance. Tap it, sacrifice Bounty Agent, destroy target legendary permanent. That's an artifact, creature, or enchantment. Feels a little bit more like a standard plant after Dominaria where there were so many legendaries. Sure, there are some legendaries in this set, but I just, I don't think you're going to be facing them all that often. They're all rares or mythics. They're all very hard to cast generally. So as such, this is basically a, a bear with a very niche upside in addition to that vigilance as well. Um, you know, all in all, this is just like a C, I guess technically a C plus because it's a bear with an upside, but the upsides are a little bit middling. Let's go with a C plus, I guess. Not the most powerful of rares. Candlelight Vigil is up next. Candlelight Vigil is three and a white for enchantment aura at common. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus two, and has vigilance. This is your real sort of run of the mill aura. It costs a little bit too much. It costs a card in your deck, and you get super blown out. You get two for one if your opponent just kills that creature. It'll play better on arena in best of one mode because... If your opponent doesn't have an answer, you just crush them and you win the match because it's best of one. But you will certainly lose uh, more often than you win if you're really jamming a bunch of auras like this into your deck. Uh, so I'm going to cut this pretty regularly. C minus. There will certainly be decks where I just somehow miss on playables and I kind of have to play this. But you should cut this more often than not. So C minus for Candlelight Vigil. 
Up next is Citywide Bust. Citywide Bust is one white white for a sorcery at rare. Destroy all creatures with toughness four or greater. The Boros hate big butts, apparently. Three mana kill all the scary stuff is an okayish wrath, but it's probably just a sideboard only card. I wouldn't want to main deck this and have it dead against a Boros mirror match. Maybe dead against a good chunk of the Selesnya deck. It could almost be like a Smite the Monstrous, assuming that you're not playing any creatures that uh, this will hit of your own. I still prefer Smite the Monstrous as a sideboard card, and I still think I like this as a sideboard card. Sure, there's going to be that time where you, when you're facing down five six sixes, and somehow you haven't died already, and this card's going to be amazing, but that's going to be a pretty rare scenario. So I'm going to go with a D-plus on Citywide Bust. Caller the Culprit is up next. Caller the Culprit is three and a white for an instant at common. Destroy target creature with toughness four or greater. It's like Smite the Monstrous except for toughness instead of power. I'm going to say this is sideboard only. Uh, you're going to face decks where this is literally dead or nearly dead or it's going to hit like one creature. So I really don't want to main deck it. Out of the board, it could be great. If there's a 5-5 a, a five, five terrifying creature, this is going to kill it. And that, that's going to be great, and that's going to feel good. But I don't think you can just guarantee that you're always going to be facing things with toughness that big. And like I said, if you're up against Boros, for example, as we talked about, the mentor creatures, etc., they're all like one power, two power. This is going to be dead. So this is a D plus. It's going to be a great sideboard card, but I think it is just a sideboard card. Up next is Conclave Tribunal. Conclave Tribunal is three and a white for an enchantment at Uncommon. Uh, we'll get to Convoke in a second. It says when Conclave Tribunal enters the battlefield, exile target non -land. permanent opponent controls until Conclave Tribunal leaves the battlefield. It's the Oblivion Ring effect, or the fixed Oblivion Ring effect. I guess the Hieromancer's Cage would be the most uh, recent version of this. But as I mentioned, it has Convoke. Convoke is the Selesnya, the green-white mechanic. Convoke, we've seen at least a couple of times already. It says that your creatures can help cast this spell. Each creature you tap while casting this spell pays for one generic mana or one mana of that creature's color. So basically, all of your creatures are mana dorks for a Convoke spell. So you could tap uh, a, a, ba a Blade Instructor and three Bounty Agents and cast this spell without tapping any actual mana. That makes Convoke actually pretty powerful because you can convoke something out possibly way sooner than you should have you can convoke out an eight drop on turn five if you have three creatures on the battlefield now of course as a result of that the convoke creatures and convoke cards are typically going to be very over costed that eight mana creature is going to be like a four four but conclave tribunal we actually just played this card basically as uh, uh the the cage the hero Mancer's cage for this cost Getting the Convoke upside to this, meaning that you can cast it earlier or you can cast it as well as another spell, is a huge upside. This is just like premium removal. I'm super happy about it. Sign me up. Solid A. This will be a first pick in probably most packs that it's in if the rare isn't ridiculous. Crush Contraband is up next. Crush Contraband is three and a white for an instant at uncommon. Choose one or both. I can't tell you how to live. Exile target artifact and or exile target enchantment um so in recent sets we have seen naturalize effects be main deckable i don't know if it's going to be in this set there are not that many artifacts and uh, the majority of them are just lockets or actually i think it, it's like one more non-locket than locket but anyways i don't know that there's artifacts that you're desperately going to be wanting to kill in every single match that you're in or every single game that you're in the enchantments a lot of the good ones are rare so i, I, I don't know I don't know if Crush Contraband is going to be main deckable. I'm going to lean towards it not being, and it just being a D-plus kind of good sideboard card in those situations where you need it. Up next is Dawn of Hope. Dawn of Hope is one and a white for an enchantment at rare. Whenever you gain life, you may pay two generic mana if you do draw a card. As well, you can pay three and a white to make a 1-1 one, one soldier creature token with lifelink. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this one. Uh, you need to be gaining life very regularly to spend a card and mana on this enchantment, which does nothing until you then gain life. And that life needs to be repeatable, frequent, and reliable 
for this to really be worth the card. Getting a 1-1 one, one lifelink for 4, that, that's okay. It's not spectacular, but it is a good mana sink. If you hit 8 mana, you're getting 2 one ones a turn. I think you definitely need to build around this, though, just because it does nothing for so long and so much of a match. So the grade will be a little bit hard to give, but let's say it's like a round of B if you have a lot of life gain, very, very preferably repeatable, and maybe a round like a C otherwise. It is still a mana sink. Um, honestly, this one's really hard to grade, and it's one of the hardest to grade that I've seen in the set. I'll have to see how it plays, but let's go with like a C if you're not built around it, and a B if you are. Up next is Demotion. Demotion is a single white mana for enchantment aura at uncommon enchant creature. Enchant creature can't block can still attack so it's not pacifism and it's activated abilities can't be activated so it's like it's like a rest for a big discount but the creature can still attack it's interesting it's really really interesting i think boros will actually love this because its plan is to attack 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 and if your opponent attacks you back cool that that's part of your plan you're racing and so having a blocker turned off is going to be great even though it doesn't turn off the attacker the huge bad thing here is it doesn't turn off a bomb a 5-5 five, five flyer is still going to be flying in and hitting you for 5 and ending the game. So you need to make sure that you are on the attack plan, you are on the race plan. So I don't entirely know where I want to grade this. It's going to be like a B plus in those aggro decks, maybe even like an A minus. And it's going to be way less good if your plan is to not always attack, if your plan is to deal with your opponent's bombs. So where do you pick it? I don't know. I think you pick it like maybe mid-pack, late mid-pack in pack one when you are starting to think that you're going to go aggro. And then by the time you know you're aggro, it's going to go way up in pick order in pack two and pack three. This is a really interesting card. I don't know where it's going to end up, but let's go with a B on this. Just be aware that the creature can still attack. This is not removal for half of the game. This is not removal if you are in any way attempting to be defensive at any point in game, at time. It is removal if you're attacking. So B, I guess, I'm really going to have to play with this card. Divine Intervention is up next, and it's a bit of a doozy. It's three white white for an enchantment at Mythic. If one or more creature tokens would be created under your control, that many four four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance are created instead. This is obviously really, really, really nutty if you have a lot of token creators in play. But you need a lot of token creators to play this. If you play this as a five mana do nothing enchantment with only a few ways to hit it when in your uh, in your deck, you're just going to lose spending an entire turn and an entire card on this. Obviously, it's a build around. You, uh, you need to be ready to not play this in sealed if you open it and you have like two token producers that aren't repeatable. It's basically an F or an A, especially if you can get a token the same turn you play this. If you can somehow drop this and immediately get a 4-4 angel, it's going to be amazing. But seriously, don't play this if you only have like two or three token producers. It's just an F in those situations. But if you're in draft and you first pick this and you build around this, boy, you're, you're going to have some serious value. Flight of Equinauts is up next. Flight of Equinauts is 7 and a white, 8 mana. For a creature human knighted on common, it's a 4-5 flyer, but it's got Convoke. So you can use your creatures to make this cheaper, so ideally you're not playing 8 mana for this. Because if you're paying 8 mana for this, you're overpaying by quite a bit. In fact, there will be games where you simply never see 8 mana. But if we think through this, if we have 3 creatures and we haven't missed a land on turn 5... This comes into play. It's a five drop. It's a four five flyer on five. And that is great. I think as long as you're sort of a decent Selesnia deck that will have creatures down, this is just like a solid B minus. Boros type aggro decks will have creatures down as well, but they're gonna wanna turn creatures sideways to do damage, not turn a bunch of creatures sideways to not do damage and make themselves a four or five. So I don't think this goes in every white deck, but I think in the decks that are gonna go wide, the decks de that do want a little bit more top heavy uh, 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 sort of beef, as opposed to just flood the board with little dudes, uh, I think this will be great in it. I think it might even be like, I think it might be a B minus, assuming you can get this down early enough. Uh, maybe, maybe just a C plus, but let's be optimistic here with a B minus. 
Gird for Battle is up next. Gird for Battle is a single white mana for a sorcery at Uncommon. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. Not being instant speed is the only saving grace from this being one of the nuttier combat tricks in a while. Still getting two plus one, plus one counters at sorcery speed for a single mana? It's probably just always fine. I think you probably just always play the first one of these if you can fit it. Maybe the second? I'm, I'm not totally sure about that. Uh, it reminds me of Common Bond, though, which was honestly one of the better commons in uh, Return to Ravnica block, which was uh, one green white for uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature, and then again, put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature. Now that, obviously, you could double up on one creature, which is why it was so much better than this one. Uh, but I think this is still fine. I think this is like... It might just be a C. It might just be play it if you have a spot and don't if you don't. Uh, but I'm going to go up to a C+. Plus. I, th I think the decks that are going to want this are going to be very, very happy with it. Putting this on something like a mentor creature to make it mentor bigger things sounds pretty decent. So C+, plus for GERD for battle. Up next is Hazda Marshall. Hazda Marshall is a single white mana for a creature human soldier at Uncommon. It's a 1-1. One, one. Whenever Hazda Marshall and at least two other creatures attack... This was Battalion, this was Boros' last mechanic in Gatecrash. Create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token with lifelink. Uh, this doesn't seem that good to me. Uh, a 1-1 one, one for 1 is not something I ever want to play unless it's crazy. And even if I, like, suicide dive this into an opponent's board with some other creatures, I get a 1-1 one, one, and this almost 100% guaranteed dies? Woo? No real interest in this outside of, like, maybe a Divine Visitation deck because it turns into a 4-4 Angel, which is great. Uh, but yeah, Hosta Marshall I've got, like, as, like, a D. I just, I don't think I want to be playing this. This is real low impact, and when you put the work into it, it's still low impact. D for Hosta Marshall. Up next is Healer Hawk. Healer Hawk is another single white mana for a creature bird at common. It's a 1-1. One -one. It's got flying... And it's got lifelink. Uh, yeah, it's one of those creatures that I'm going to lose to, but I'm going to have to explain to you why you generally shouldn't play this. A 1-1 one, one for 1 needs to do something. We just talked about this with the Hosta Marshal. And flying and having lifelink isn't enough of a something. There are some cute interactions, like having a blade instructor or something mentor the bird. And I think that's obviously why this bird is uh, uh, in this set, is to be mentored. Maybe throwing some auras on it would be a little bit annoying, but... At that point, we're in the realm of playing bad cards or mediocre cards in the case of like a Blade Instructor. And yes, there are very, very, very good mentor, mentor cards. We'll talk about that later. But if you're playing bad cards to make other bad cards become okay cards, just play okay cards from the get-go. So I've got Healer's Hawk at a D+. Yes, I think it'll be fine with Mentor, but it, it's not something that I want to want to really play with. So I'm starting at a D plus. I could be totally wrong on mentor, but I think people are going to get really best case scenario mentality and think, aha, I'm going to mentor every single turn. And I don't think you are. Hunted Witness is up next. Hunted Witness is another single white mana for a 1-1. One -one. It's a creature human. And when Hunted Witness dies, create a 1-1 one -one white soldier creature token with lifelink. Now this is uh, actually a bit better than the last two, I think. It's a far cry from Doomed Traveler because the token not having flying is a huge downside. Doomed Dissenter, which I literally in typing these notes just realized was a reference to Doom Traveler. I'm an idiot, apparently. Wasn't nearly as good in the formats that it's been in, and that makes a 2-2. This just makes a 1-1. One, one. It'll be nice to still have a creature around for Convoke, and getting a counter on it with Mentor, making it 2-2 two, two lifelink will be nice as well. But again, we're starting to ask a lot to make this card maybe okay-ish. As is, I'm going to start cutting Hunted Witness quite frequently, so I'm going to start it at a C-. And just as a bit of further talk on Mentor, I think Mentor is a fine mechanic. I just think that you have to remember that your opponent's going to have creatures. And they're going to block, and they're going to make intelligent blocks. And so your 1-1 one, one that gets a counter from that Mentor will run into a 2-3 or a 3-3 and just die. So I'm not sold on Mentor being this mechanic that's always going to go off and you're always going to get in these attacks. So be careful with it. That's the way that I'm going to approach the format to start with anyways. I could be totally wrong. We'll see. 
Next up is Inspiring Unicorn. Inspiring Unicorn is two white white for a creature unicorn. Add on common, it's a 2-2. Whenever Inspiring Unicorn attacks, creatures you control get... Not plus two plus one, that would make sense for the name. It's plus one plus one until end of turn. It's not quite inspiring charge, you see. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is interesting. It's not too shabby. It's obviously extremely overcosted if you're on the defense. But if you keep up the pressure, this attacking is a 3-3, three, three, along with pumping your team. It's pretty darn solid. Probably a relatively high pick and auto include in basically every white deck that wants to attack a lot. As a quick tip, that, that's probably every white deck in this format, probably in like the B minus range, just because it is really mediocre on the back foot. If you need some defense, if you're you, if you find yourself not actually being the beatdown deck, boy, are you overpaying for this card? Uh, but yeah, keep up that pressure, and I think this card is going to be totally fine. Uh, B minus for inspiring unicorn. Up next is Intrusive Pack Beast. Intrusive Pack Beast is four and a white for a creature beast at common. It's a 3-3 three, three with Vigilance. And when Intrusive Pack Beast enters the battlefield, tap up to two target creatures your opponents control. Uh, yeah, so it's a 3-3 three, three for five. That's a little bit a little bit overcosted, but the effect is, is pretty darn nice, tapping two target creatures. So this could actually be playable in a low curve Boros deck, even though it's a five drop, as a finisher. Because you're going to tap those two creatures and hopefully just get in for lethal. It's not a high pick, but I think it is around the C plus level. I think a lot of decks are going to be pretty darn okay with this, even though it's a five drop. You definitely don't want more than one of these. And I think some decks might even not want this one. If there's just better ways of getting around those creatures, if you've got a bunch of Sky Knight Legionnaires or something, tapping two creatures doesn't matter. You're flying over top. So I think there's going to be decks where you should cut this. Um, so C plus might actually be slightly too high. C plus is the play it almost always. Uh, so maybe it's more like a C. Uh, but I think some decks this will be a little bit more like a C plus. So uh, split grade of C, C plus, because uh, uh, let's not commit to a grade. <laughs> Up next is Ledev Guardian. Ledev Guardian is three and a white for a creature human knight at common. It's a 2-4 with Convoke. And that's it. Uh, it's a 2-4 for four, which is standard and generally is pretty meh. It's like a C minus. You'd cut it pretty much as much as you can. But if you have to play it, you're not, you know, you're not crying that it's so bad. Getting a discount on this with your other creatures maybe budges this up to like a high C minus but still not as high as a C. Generally, you should just not be playing this. It, again, if you have to, if it's your 23rd card and you're desperate for one, it's fine. But the ideal is don't play this card. It's just, uh, it's a lot of mana for uh, not much. So C minus. Light of the Legion is up next. Light of the Legion is four white white for a creature angel at rare. And she's a five five with flying. She's got a mentor. And when Light of the Legion dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on each white creature you control. This is just nasty. At six mana, it'll likely play a bit better in Selesnya decks than it will in Boros decks. Just because Boros decks are probably going to look a little bit sideways at a six mana creature. But it's a six mana 5-5 five, five flyer. Plus, it helps buff your team if they attack alongside her. And then if an answer comes along and kills her... She pumps a hopefully good chunk of your team. This looks amazing. This is an easy A. This is a, a snap first pick, and I think every single pack, I think the only place where you slightly take some time to think about this is, like I said, a really low curve Boros deck maybe can't afford a six drop. But boy, is it a good six drop. Solid A for Light of the Legion. Up next is Loxodon Restorer. Loxodon Restorer is four white white for a creature elephant cleric at common. It's a three four with Convoke. When Loxodon Restorer enters the battlefield, you gain four life. A three four four six is out of the question. Absolutely not. You hate your life if you're paying six mana for a three four that gains you four life. Now, if you can discount this down to four, it becomes like a C-ish card. All in all, though, I just don't super care for this. The life gain just won't matter all that much, and the creature you're getting is relatively mediocre. With a discount, sure, but if you can't guarantee that you're always going to have that discount, then this just seems much worse. So I'm going to put this at a C minus. I'm going to say that I'm going to cut this way more than I am actually going to play it. Up next is Luminous Bonds. It's back! 
we just had it, and it's back already, and it's got new art, and I love Luminous Bonds. It's two and a white for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature can't attack or block. Unlike Demotion, this is just pacifism for one more. But as we've known with the uh, two times that we've seen Luminous Bonds so far, three mana is still absolutely, totally, utterly great for this card. It's obviously first pickable. It's probably just going to be the best white common. Easy, easy A. You first pick this in a lot of packs. Uh, the bomb or the rare has to be real balmy for you to not just take this card. So easy A for Luminous Bonds. Parhelion Patrol is up next. Parhelion Patrol is three and a white for a creature, Human Knight at common. It's a two, three with flying, with vigilance, and with mentor. Uh, this looks solid. It's a, you know, it's a two, three rather than a three, two for four, which is a downgrade from like Snapping Drake. Uh, but this will attack and block in the air relatively okay. And with vigilance, it does get to do both and probably survive way more commonly than many of the other mentors in the set. I like this enough to be probably a C plus. I think I just always play the first one 100% of the time, probably the second and maybe the third as well. It's just not a high, high pick though. I, I would pick it right around the same place as Snapping Drake. So C plus for Parhelion Patrol. Righteous Blow is up next. Righteous Blow is a single white mana for an instant at common. Righteous Blow deals two damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Uh, this was uh, Slash of Talons, I believe, in uh, Ixalan. It's fine. It's totally fine. There's a lot of low power creatures in this format. Uh, you know, look at the, uh, the set review that we're doing right now today. A massive amount of them are one ones or two ones or three ones. Uh, this kills quite a few number of things in combat in a number of decks. However, there will be colors and matchups where you know, this doesn't necessarily kill a lot of things, but it is still one mana and one mana to kill a two, two. That's that's fine. That is totally fine. So I would probably play the first Righteous Blow in most of my decks. I would certainly be ready to side it out if I see that there's just not enough situations where it's going to be taking out creatures if my opponent is playing nothing but like two threes or one threes or something. And as well, if you have a game plan to deal with their two ones and three ones and two twos and etc., then you might not need these uh, uh, either. But I think this is just fine. I, as I said, I'd probably just always play the first one in every deck and uh, some decks would even play a couple of these. So C plus for Righteous Blow. Up next is Pegasus Corsair. Oh, uh, nope, I'm sorry, Rock Charger. Rock Charger is a completely new card. It's two and a white for a creature bird with flying. Whenever Rock Charger attacks, target attacking creature without flying gains flying until end of turn, and it's a 1-3. It's just Pegasus Courser with a new name and a minor, minor update that it can't target a creature that already has flying, whereas Pegasus Courser can. Will that ever matter? Not in 999 out of a thousand games. No. Anyways, yeah, this is Pegasus Charger, Pegasus Courser, sorry, except it's been increased to uncommon uh, uh, rarity. My assumption is uh, either A, they really desperately needed to fix something with MTG Arena with targeting a flyer, or they just wanted to avoid the LOL Colossal Dreadma comments at Pegasus Courser being in a third set in a row. We know this card. We know it very well. It's solid. It deserves the upgrade to uncommon it's just not really quite a first pick but a super solid b minus up next is skyline scout skyline scout is one and a white for a creature human scout at common it's a two one whenever skyline scout attacks you may pay one and a white if you do it gains flying until end of turn this reminds me a lot of leaping master uh, from cons of tarkir which was this card but red and you paid two and a white to give it flying but it was an activated ability so you could do it on defense but Typically, you just did it on uh, on, uh, on offense. A 2-1 for 2 is going to be fine for aggro decks. They're attacking. The 2-1 the versus the 2-2 two, two is, isn't that big of a deal. And this is a great mana sink if you find yourself with excess mana and nothing to do with it to get through even more damage by turning this into a flyer on, you know, turn 4, 5, 6, when you maybe don't have creatures or stuff to put down, or at least you don't have enough to use all of your mana. It's not amazing. And C plus might even be too generous, but I'm going to be generous and give this a C plus. Up next is Sunholm Stalwart. Sunholm Stalwart is one and a white for a creature human soldier at uncommon. It's 2-2 two -two with first strike and mentor. It is a hell of a bear. It's uh yeah, it's a 2-2 two -two for two with first strike, which is nuts. Do you remember how good Ether Tracer was? It was a 2-1 first strike for two. This is a 2-2 two -two first strike for two. Now, yes, Tracer did make a servo, but that wasn't the best part of it. It was a cheap first striker. Uh, and this has Mentor, which, 
you know, it's a 2-2, so it's only powering up your 1-1s or your 1-2s or your 1-3s, but you know, this is still going to attack in with impunity in the early game. It's not a bomb, but I, I bet there are some packs where this could be in the running for first pick. But make no mistake, those would be bad packs where this does happen to be the first pick. I think it's really good. I, th I think it's probably just high enough to be a B-. minus. It seems really decent to me. I really like when my bears get first strike, so... Let's go with a B minus on Sunholm Stalwart. I, I slightly feel like that might be too generous. Maybe it should be a little bit more like a C plus. You know what? I talked myself into it. Let's go down to a C plus. And actually, this is a good point to remind you that the grades are a loose framework. It's the discussion that's much more important. Don't focus too much on if I rated one card a C plus and another one a B minus and they're actually the same card. The discussion is really the 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 main point of these set reviews. Sworn Companions is up next. Sworn Companions is two and a white for a sorcery at common. Create two one one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. Uh yeah, it's not raise the alarm, it's not instant speed, so I'm not super stoked on this, but it is a two two with lifelink for two, and that's probably okay-ish. It's not exciting, but it is fine. Obviously, it's nice with Mentor turning each of these creatures into a 2-2. If you've had, got a couple of Mentors, it ramps with Convoke. It goes in basically every white deck, I think, so I think it is just a C+. I don't know if I want to be loading up on these, um, but I think the first one is always playable. So C+, for Sworn Companions, just totally okay. Take Heart is up next. Take Heart is a single white mana for an instant at common. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. You gain one life for each attacking creature you control. Uh, this is fine. It's going to help keep you alive in that race situation where you're Boros and you're attacking and taking hits and attacking and taking hits and uh, it lets you get through a little bit more damage, lets you kind of maybe erase a turn of uh, getting hit in the face. It's really just an okay combat trick. Uh, it's not an always play, but if you've got a spot and you are aggro, sure, cut it or don't. I can't tell you what to do. I think it's just a middle-of-the-road C. Tenth District Guard is one and a white for a creature human soldier at common. It's a 2-2. Two -two. When Tenth District Guard... I stumble over that a lot. I don't know why. ETB's target creature gets plus zero, plus one until end of turn. Uh, it's a bear with a pretty tiny upside, but probably just big enough to get that C-plus bear with an upside grade. It helps keep your mentors alive for a turn. That's probably going to be the... the, the primary and best use case scenario of this. You know, it makes your, uh, your blade instructor be a 3-2. So, you know, maybe it doesn't just Obi-Wan and die the first time it tries to teach Luke something in a, in a, in a fight. Uh, yeah, so I, I think this is just going to be fine. I think it's a C+. I think you probably just always play it. It's a 2-2 two -two that's going to attack like a 2-2, two -two, and it's going to keep a mentor alive. The slight downside there is if you play this on turn two, it's, it's not keeping any mentors alive. You, th there's no one-drop mentors. So, you know, it's just a bear in that situation. Um, but the fact that it does get a little bit better if you do draw it later in the game it is totally fine. So C plus for 10th District Guard. And the final card for white is Venerated Loxodon. Venerated Loxodon is four and a white for a creature elephant cleric at rare. It's a four, four with Convoke. When Venerated Loxodon enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature that convoked it. This is actually pretty interesting. At its scariest, you're getting like a ridge scale tusker for quote unquote free by tapping five creatures. The downside is you do need to be able to just turn off a huge chunk of your board for a turn, which sounds either really dicey or really win more -y. I actually think the real world use case of this is way closer to putting on like two, maybe three counters while still having some blockers back so that you don't just, you know, die. At its worst, it's a five mana four four, which isn't exactly the end of the world. I, I don't think it's a super high pick, but I think it is fine enough to be like a B. The times where it's going to be ridge scale tusker the game was likely already going to be over anyways because again the, the downside of convoke is you do have to turn off a chunk of your board and if you're doing that without a concern you were probably winning anyways and this card is just a win more card so i i am going to go with a b on it i think it is fine i'll, I'll have to keep an eye on it i i think it'll go as low as a b minus and as high as a b plus so let's go b on venerated loxodon 
So that's going to wrap it up for the White Guilds of Ravnica set review. Bit of a shorter set review. There's only 30 white, blue, black, red, and green cards. Uh, the gold cards are going to be split into two days. I'm going to do three guilds on one day, and then two guilds, the artifacts, and the lands on the second day. There's a lot more cards there because this is a gold set for sure but i'm excited for the set i i think it's going to be super fun white is probably the color i'm least excited about convoke and mentor aren't really doing it for me but just wait until we get to blue and red holy moly is it stuff i'm super excited for that but in white we've got that divine uh, uh visitation 4-4 angel maker which seems super super fun to build around and there are certainly some good cards and i do really want to see how mentor plays out like I've said, the Mentors are generally pretty weak, and attacking in, you may just not really be able to have many of the Mentors or Mentees survive their lessons, and that's not the best. Basically, it's going to come down to, is blocking allowed in this format? And I think it might be. But anyways, I want to hear what you guys think about these cards, about Guilds of Ravnica, in the comments down below. Chat with me, chat with each other, discuss the cards, keep it civil and friendly, please. I know it's a high emotion time during uh, during set reviews. But anyways, if you like the content, uh, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Mana League. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can find me at Facebook.com slash The Mana League, Twitch.tv slash The Mana League, and Patreon.com slash the mana leak if you like the content click that thumbs up button click subscribe if you want to see more and uh if you have any questions comments or suggestions let me know otherwise i'll see you tomorrow for the blue set review